I've got a little bit more styling that I want to do on my sheet. If I look at my web page, the things that need fixing up now are this information down here in the contact page. We need to separate this table. It's a bit too hard to read. And I want to apply some styling to this uh, vital statistics page where my unordered list is. So what I'm going to do is start to put those styles in. I'm going to do this all in one big hit. You'll be able to see how we go through. I'm going to go down to the bottom after I've got my headings. In fact, I'm going to keep my headings at the bottom. There's no specific reason for this, but I find it easier if I group like things the same. Now I'm going to paste my code in. I'm going to go through my code and then we'll see what the code actually does. So I've put a style in now for my list items. I want my list items to have a indent of six pixels. I will go through at the end and explain what these things are so they make a little bit more sense once we actually get an idea of how they work. I want the paragraphs and the tables to also be indented by that much. This is for the whole document. All the paragraph tags, all the table tags. I want my table tags to also have a width of 458 pixels. I want sorry, I want the whole table to be 458 pixels wide. I want there to be a margin around the edge of 5 pixels and 50 pixels and I want the border spacing to be this here. I had some other things that I've gone in and I've put this bit in front of them which means ignore at the moment. There are things that I decided I might play with later on that backslash hash means ignore the text in between here. It's still here in case I do want to go back to it but it's not going to show. It's only the things in blue, that bluish purple color with the dark font that are actually going to show. Into my table, I want my table headings to be bold. All of my table headings to be bold. I want the border bottoms to be dashed and that color, one pixel thick. I want the data in the table to be aligned at the top. I'm going to go now and specifically say how I want the columns to be arranged. To talk about classes, remember earlier on, we went into our table and we said we would have the table header class year call, class inst call, class qual call. I've got those headers there. Just like we said CSS will recognize the style for the divs to start with a hash key, we will want the styles for classes to start with a full stop. There is no difference between these two things here. HTML says here's the information on my page, all of this information on the page. That's all it will display except it's got this line at the top that says go to the style sheet and apply this style. So the HTML looks for this layout.css and it applies this style to it. It looks down here and sees this body tag and it says I will apply this to the whole body tag. I will apply this to the whole table tag. I will apply this style to the H2 tag. It looks through. If it sees a hash in front of it, it knows it's a division or a divider or a div tag, and so it will apply these styles to that named div tag. If it sees a full stop, it will go, there is a class in here that I've got to apply this style to, and I will apply it to just this class, which means it will apply it to just the information that is in that year call line which has the heading year. If I look at the website, it means anything that starts with dot class year call will just apply to this 1972, 76, 80, 89, 91 column. Anything that is applying to the class inst call will apply to this bit in the middle here, and anything that applies to qual call class will fix this bit here. It's how I'm going to break that table up and get it to look nice on the page. So to do that I'm going to go back here to my columns and I'm going to say for year call I want them to be 10% wide and a line left. For space call I want them to be 5% 
and have a border at the bottom. And for qual call, I want them to be 60% wide and have the text aligning at the left. Each of them starts with an open squiggle bracket and finishes with a closed squiggle bracket. And the power of Notepad++ comes through again because I can see my classes show up as red, my normal tags show up as blue, my div tags show up with a hash in them, and they're all grouped with this bit on the side that says this all applies to one div. Let's save that and see what actually happens. I will minimize that page. I'll go in here. I could normally have my one web page open and refresh it with the F5 key, but I want to keep opening a new page each time so that I can show you the progression as we go through. When I go down, I look at my table, and you can see my table has now had the styling attributed to it. It's much easier to read. There's space between the columns. There's little lines that separate each of the things so I can see what it is. And the other styles have been applied as well. Those other styles were information for the table to make it line up properly and how my lists actually appear. Does it look any different from that to that? So you can see all of that style has pushed those things around and made my page again have more and more of a professional look and feel to it. Our web page is now starting to look quite good. The only thing that's missing really is some pictures in it to uh, make it a little bit interesting and maybe give us an opportunity to get rid of some of the gaps that are in the page here. I'm also going to put some pictures in the footer of the page as well. The first picture I want to put in is already located in my web design folder that I'd organized before I started this project. And the picture I want to put in is this picture here of Tim. So I'm going to go and put the code for inserting a picture into my index page. I'm going to put it inside the content. And the way to put a picture in is to use this code. Image source or image src equals look in the images folder and then look specifically for this image tim underscore bl dot jpg. So it's telling the the HTML is being told to go into the web design folder where all it's not being told to go into the web design folder. Index is already in the H in the Web Design 1 folder. It is being told to look inside this folder for something called images and inside looking for images look for this Tim underscore BL and it's doing that. I've also put some other information in. I've said I want the picture to be 100 wide, 130 high and I want it to have the alternative text that says image of Tim when it comes up with the title picture of Tim. So if you hold your cursor over it, that's what it's going to say. Let's save this and let's have a look at this page. I go into Web Design 1, I go into my index page, and I've got my picture of Tim, and if I hold my mouse over the top, it says picture of Tim on it.